Well, good morning, church. It's great to see you again today. Uh, if we haven't met yet, my name is Nathan Like. I'm the Interim Family Ministry Director here at Prince of Peace, and uh, I'm honored to get to close out this series called The Jesus Way uh, with a message today thinking about the word justify, justify. I want to start by a reading, as you heard from uh, the bumper video from Paul's letters uh, to, the, to the church in uh, Galatia, and uh, it reads like this. You and I are Jews by birth, not sinners like the Gentiles, yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. For no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law. But suppose we seek to be made right with God through faith in Christ, and then we are found guilty because we have abandoned the law. Would that mean Christ has led us to sin? Absolutely not. Rather, I am a sinner. If I rebuild the old system of law, I already tore down. For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me, gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. This is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As I was preparing this message and thinking about this passage, it reminded me of something, something magnetic, something reflective, and something that goes on the back of my car. It's one of these. And it's not for me. <laughs> I've had my license for a while. But I've got teenagers in the house, folks. Pray fervently for me, if you would. Um, <laughs> I remember people saying, just wait till they're teenagers. I thought, you know what? I think, I'm going to parent my way out of this. And, you know, mileage varies. <laughs> it's all true. All of it's true. Everything they warn me about. I love my kids. But, you know, it's, it's challenging. And sometimes having a student driver will teach you to pray fervently, too. Um, I'm teaching my oldest daughter to drive, and there I am in the passenger seat, and you would probably hear from me things like this. Blinker. Yep, 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 you're good. Go, go for it, go, go. Punch it, go. Or you might hear, get, uh, in the next, the roundabout, go, go in the lane, not that lane, left, I mean right, yes. Uh, can't you read my mind? You know, sometimes, sometimes it's hard. <laughs> And sometimes she gets payback and I have to grab the handle. You know, one of those, one of those moments. But um, <laughs> there's definitely a lot of rules to the road. It's funny, when I took my permit test, I still distinctly have this memory. I don't remember any of the questions, but I do remember when I walked up to see how I did, she said, you barely passed. <laughs> she said, if you'd gotten one more <laughs> wrong, You'd be signing up again. And I remember walking away at the age of 15 thinking, I hope I didn't miss any important ones. <laughs> like, what, isn't that just, in, it's just insane of like, we're going to put you on the road behind the wheel of this, you know, uh, 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 machine made of steel, and hopefully you, you remember the stuff you're supposed to remember. Good luck. Um, there are a lot of rules to the road, but I'd never quite thought about this until I was driving one day. I thought, you know what? There also has to be a lot, a lot of grace. Otherwise, 
every student driver and every licensed driver, let's be honest, should immediately report to the nearest police station and say, lock me up, I confess. I did not signal <laughs> about 628 times in my <laughs> driving career. Or you would say, you know what? I didn't come to a complete stop. I kind of did one of those. It's a country road. No one's around here and sort of rolled through. Lock me up, throw away the key. Or, and this is how we know we've broken the law. You drive down the street, maybe Lock Levon Drive. There's one of those electronic speedometers. It will tell the truth. <laughs> so you should go to the police station and say, all right, I confess, I went 36 and a 35. There has to be grace, right? There has to be grace, especially for my student driver. And when there's mistakes and, 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 and screw-ups, I don't say, pull over, you forgot your blinker. I'm, I'm getting out and, and we're going to walk home. Let's, let's both call. No, that's not how it works. There has to be some grace, right, when you've got a student driver, or even, dare I say, if you're the driver, there has to be some grace, or you're not going to be able to get anywhere. The point of being a student driver is to give it a go and learn from the teacher who's alongside you on the journey. The goal is not to never make a mistake. Spoiler alert, do you hear where I'm going with this message yet? <laughs> The same goes for being a disciple or a follower of the Jesus way. Here's how this showed up very real, very intensely in my life. When I was about 12, I attended a Billy Graham crusade on a whim and spent the last 30 or so years of my life trying to figure out what happened on that night. Very powerful experience that I had. And some context, if you don't know who Billy Graham is, he's probably one of the most famous evangelists of the 20th century and would go from city to city, from country to country, and huge crowds would come to hear him say basically the same message, the same message every time. Now, before that night, there's some distinct memories I have in childhood of being a kid in my bed at night and crying and begging God not to send me to hell. That's where I had heard was the place that sinners get sent to. I didn't want to go there. And I knew I had sinned. I'd seen the Ten Commandments. I had even heard the teachings of Jesus and thought, woof, I missed the mark. I've fallen short of the law's requirements. And then one night, this old man at the Metrodome, in his gentle way, starts talking about how Jesus made a way for me and you and for all of our sins to be forgiven, and that I could be a new person. And I started crying different tears in the dome that night, tears of relief and tears of joy, and tears when you feel such genuine, pure love pointed right at you. You ever had one of those moments? It's too much to bear. Your body has to respond to it. And I was never quite the same after that night. And if I'm honest, I also was never quite sure. Because after that night, I would still make mistakes, trying to be good. And if I'm honest again, sometimes I would make choices knowing that they weren't good. And then I'd start to feel bad again I'd start to get that crying in bed feeling. And it just stuck with me. There was part of me that wasn't sure in my head. And then when I started hearing the Lutheran confession, the one that uh, maybe you've heard around communion, you confess what you've done and what you've left 
undone. Oof. I thought I could get off the hook with making the right choice. There's stuff that I didn't do that I should have done that I didn't do. And then I'd start to feel bad again. In fact, I was so bad at trying to be good that to this day, I can still feel bad about feeling too good and will make myself feel more bad so I can feel less good. Uh Uh-huh. I can really get into my head. One of my favorite TikTokers who uh, grew up in some similar theological settings and waters as me tells this story, and I was laughing with how much this resonated with my own experience. I'll read it for you here. He said, every Sunday in my super fundamentalist Christian church, they would do this thing called an altar call, where at the end of the service, it would get really emotional, and they would be like, if you don't know beyond the shadow of a doubt, or if you're not 100% certain, you need to come down here and get saved. And this shows how neurotic I am because pretty much every week I'm like, I'm not 100%. (laughs) So I would go down there to get saved like a couple times a month. And at first the pastor was like, Kevin, you got saved last week. (laughs) And I would be like, not beyond the shadow of a doubt. That was absolutely me. And I could share some of the stories. I can share the, the, the last time I went up for an altar call, but I'll save it because we got to get through communion today. I want us all to have one of the best meals we'll ever have here. So um, but I'll save that. But I also want to say, in my opinion, there can be a place for very clearly and tangibly responding to the gospel. Sometimes we might need to do that more to give people a clear moment, a clear moment to respond to that feeling, to that call of Jesus. But unfortunately for me, and fortunately for this sermon, I missed out on a key part of this passage that I wish I could have coupled with that night at the Metrodome. Galatians 2.16, yet we know that a person is made right by, with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. This is one of the passages that freed Martin Luther, who put the Lutheran in our church's name, It freed him from his torturous attempt to perfectly obey the law as an Augustinian monk. And scholars and historians don't know exactly when or how it happened, but at some point, he gave up, just like Paul did, and just like I did many years ago. In fact, Luther's radical encounter with grace resonated with me so deeply and so strongly of another guy who got so deep in his head and had the law always pursuing him, one step behind him. And the freedom he experienced, that's part of what made me go to Luther Theological Seminary, made me want to become a Lutheran pastor. Galatians 2.19, for when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God. Reminds me of one of my favorite lines in uh, the Mark Twain book, Huckleberry Finn, where he's wrestling. Do I help free Jim? And there's a line. He's talking to himself. He says, all right, then I'll go to hell. (laughs) Powerful when we wrestle through those moments. You remember this bumper sticker? To follow the Jesus way is to journey through life with one of those on and with Jesus in the passenger seat. Now you might ask yourself, wait, wait a second. Why isn't Jesus in the driver's seat. I've listened to K-102. Jesus is supposed to take the wheel. 
Well, because out of love, Jesus won't make you do anything. But people will try to make you do all sorts of things. And fear can be a really powerful motivator, even if it's not very life-giving or healthy. Something that we uh, heard last week from Philemon that I feel like is a very Jesus-y attitude that Paul has. He says, I wanted you to help because you were willing, not because you were forced. Look at the Gospels. When did Jesus make anybody do anything? It's always an invitation. I think Jesus wants the same thing for us. You and me and all people are being invited through the Holy Spirit and the gift of faith to just drive. And in the driving, Jesus will help us to become more like him by showing us his ways, by giving us those instructions through the Holy Spirit, whispering in our ear. It's funny, in, in Galatians talks about this earthly body, this earthly vessel, th- this vehicle. We're souls steering <laughs> these bodies around. So I want us to think about Jesus being with us in that journey of life. And when, not if, we screw things up, Jesus is there to help us get back on the road. He's not going to say, pull over, and then walk out and leave us. I hope you hear this in today's message. The point of following Jesus is to give it a go and learn from the teacher who's alongside us on the journey. The goal is not to never make a mistake. And I hope you hear freedom in that. So let's treat ourselves and each other like we've got one of these bumper stickers on. Because the Jesus way is all about grace. So I live in this earthly body. I drive this earthly vessel by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you. Thank you that you invite us, you call to us, you tap us on the shoulder and give us a new way. I even thank you that there is a law that you've given us that gives us some sort of context and boundaries of how we can live and love in a way that is honoring to you and to each other. But most of all, thank you, God, for your grace that allows us to keep going and to go into the adventure that is this life, this gift of being here on earth to breathe and to live and to explore the possibilities of what loving you and loving our neighbors as ourselves might look like. Thank you that you will never leave us nor forsake us and that we can count on you to stick with us along the way. Help us to be good student drivers. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen.